welcome to the final match between Thebus and Rancor from the round of eight of Hasu League of VSL Season 13. Thebus starting the upright hand. Actually, let's these color swap. Nah, let's keep the color swap. Actually, you know what? We're going to stick with it. Upper right hand corner, we have Phoebus as the hot pink Terran. Bottom right hand corner, we have Rancor as the light pink Zerg. So game one, Phoebus just really, honestly, out macroing, controlling the match. Game two, Phoebus out aggressing Rancor. Game three, Rancor just it seems like wrestling and finding that gap to get in the match. And then game four, Rancor just going extremely unpredictable with the build. To the point where I had trouble following it. And just going for a very quick two base bust. With the complete caveat. Or the complete caveat. The complete slew of the tech that is available to Zerg. The only thing missing there, it seemed like Defilers and Ultra. But yeah, all sorts of units engaged in that two base bust. Phoebus having trouble reacting. I am curious what we're going to see now in game five. If it is any indicator, it looks like Rancor's aggression is just somewhat stronger than Thebus' ability, one, to adjust, or two, to be aggressive himself. We are seeing some Overlord opener. This is a four-player map. Wavelet, looks like the initial Overlord scout is moving towards Thebus' natural expansion, so that could be an advantage here for Rancor. He is opening up what looks like to be a 12-hatch build. Wavelet being a larger, more economic map might favor Phoebus overall. Phoebus opening up with a potential front door seal, which I like at this stage. SCV scout moving, looks like to the upper left-hand corner first, drone scout moving clockwise. So both players are gonna end up seeing each other potentially last in the overall scouting order, which I think is gonna end up being, actually it's gonna be disadvantageous for both players, knowing the level of flexibility and aggression on both sides. Spawning pool, now dropping down for Rancor. We'll see if he grabs a gas immediately after this on 12. Or if he's going to go for potentially earlier gas play. It looks like he is going to go ahead and, well, going to grab it on 13, so sneak out. A little bit later gas, but a few more drones. Pile on a few minerals in between. A bunker preemptively being built at the natural expansion, a marine orient position, which I think is wise. Cross spawn follow up. For the scout, so he is so Phoebus gonna get a little bit of a later scout. But he's gonna get a scout overall. Overlord, I believe, yeah, does see that bunker on the corner. As if he sees that hatchery just about finishing. And so knows what he's up against. Just two Zerglings being produced initially here. As Phoebus' SCV wanders in to Evaluate the situation. Sees the extractor. Doesn't know the precise timing of when it was planted. But everything look... Yeah. Just showing... Two hatch layer play. And the layer being morphed. Phoebus has the time recording of when that was planted down. He's grabbing a refinery himself. So I think he's going to opt for mech play. He's... Is building a handful of marines. So this is going to be four. Potentially five. But this is either to go to mech play or very early double engineering bay, well, engineering bay and academy to just get a lot of tech uh, behind this. Let's see if he gets three SCVs in here. Actually, this is pretty normal overall. Ignore what I said. Engineering bay first. Getting a little ahead of myself and excited is what it comes down to. I'm like, wait, is this mech play? No. Not mech play. Standard. Standard in a particular style of build, which is this. To go ahead and get that early weapons one. So the early weapons one, first of all, he needs to keep pumping marines in the midst of this. The early weapons one works really, really well. Against early mutilisk play. However, we're seeing a third hatchery planted from Rancor and no Spire as of yet. Never mind, Spire at the natural expansion fooled me as well. So it looks like it's gonna be three, potentially three hatch play once again. And unfortunately, so the level one weapons does allow mitigation of Mutalisk in the early game. However, playing a little bit lighter on the barracks also means that there's not as much pressure that can be applied against this interior three hatch play. Academy's now up. Second bunker or second barracks in position. I think usually it's like the barracks and stim comes before the barracks. And I'm almost wondering if the barracks went down from Thebus. 
just in anticipation of this. SCV scouting around just to kind of get eyes on what's out here. Some Zerglings now grouping up towards the natural expansion. Second gas has been grabbed. Spire about two-thirds finished. This is going to give a lot of larva for Rancor to work with. And he's just diving forward with the Zerglings. I thought he was going to wait a little bit. But going straight into the main, this is the problem with going that one barracks light marine play as well. As the Zergling run by has become more of a problem. So able to get some economic disruption in the main. This is also delaying that Compsat. Stimpak just is not finished yet. And the Zerglings now wandering down a single Marine that was very heads up on Deepest's part to leave a single Marine there. But a lot of economic disruption happening in the meantime. SCV's trying to engage. Finally, Stimpak finished. So the Zergling's going to get cleaned up. But between all of the scouting information, between the delayed SCV time and the SCV kills, I think it was worthwhile. Double Comsat. Gonna see the creep colonies, three creep colonies being dropped and the spire and mutalisks now in production however level one weapons not that far away let's see if some turrets can get in place before there's sufficient mutalisks to engage this the three initial mutalisks aren't gonna get a lot of yeah so already finding the turrets there you can see rancor wanting to get aggressive with what he has immediately another slew of zerglings being produced the sunk colonies on the front suggest he just wants to press into this as quickly as possible. Standard Rancor stuff. Rancor sitting at 21 workers. We'll see how long it takes him to go up to 22 workers. Because I have a feeling he just wants to get it done with what he has. Stimpak to the front. That Overlord getting picked off. Decent early economic damage there. Also can slow down the follow-up attacks. Range is now finished. And level 1 weapons not that far off. Which is really going to mitigate these Mutalisks' ability... To solo against these marines, particularly with the usual six instead of eight that you usually see in this grouping. SCV nearby, looking to check out whether there's a third being grabbed for Rancor. Rancor's still trying to micro behind this. He's and this is a really nice protective turret line. I like the positioning of this. Also covering the ramp. Three turrets to the south, second gas being grabbed. A little bit of a so a, a good turret coverage, honestly, overall. Single mulus engaging. To get that SCV out of there. And that SCV sneaking out. Pretty significant in my opinion. Nice hide. The Zerglings and the Mutalisks. Fanning back around. A single Zergling being left to kind of scout this. But now Phoebus is moving out of his base. Thing is, is he's not going to really be able to pressure this front. But he can potentially pressure. A potential third. And deny that. Macro up. And slow Rancor's economy down. Zergling's trying to scatter to the low ground, having trouble grouping up. You can see the drone now exiting that 9 o'clock position. And Phoebus getting some nice leads. Another Overlord getting caught out in the open. So things not looking good for Rancor thus far. He's got two base play. Yeah, he's shelled up. Might even lose a third Overlord. Does lose a third Overlord. Phoebus finding ways to be aggressive. And just really exploiting... Yeah, getting a lot of damage done. Lurkers being morphed. Zerglings being morphed. Rancor looks like he wants to go ahead and press into this. There, keep in mind, there's already a bunker in position. And turrets nearby to provide some latent detection. First starport on the way. You also see a machine shop. So Thebus wants to go ahead and potentially get a siege tank. To go for a front door bust against this. Wants to end it now. Mutalisks fanning out. Pressing towards that natural expansion. Lurkers are here on the front. Without the swarm to protect. I'm not sure how effective that's going to be though. Against the follow-up. And Rancor is in a difficult situation. He's supply blocked right now. Which does not help. He's behind in supply. He's behind in economy. His tech is maybe okay. SCV sees the army encroaching. Losing some Zerglings here and there. But this is a big medic marine force. With level 1 weapons. Level 1 armor is going to be here not too long. Maybe a hold position lurker attack. Midfield could be the difference in this game. This is going to be huge. Does Phoebus comps at it? Does he also wait for the science vessels? The next question. Or does he just press across this? And are these hold position? Is the next question. Comps at by Phoebus. Still comps adding the main. Looking potentially for a greater spire. The Mutalisks backing up into this. Able to pick off one turret. Able to get a second turret. The Marines coming in. A little bit light. 
Third hatchery is being grabbed. There's already a Marine engaging that, though. And the Medic Marine Ball is back in position. Phoebus comps adding to try to track those Mutalisks and keep an eye on their position. Lurker's now moving forward. I think they're just out of view. Diving into the Marine Ball. One of them getting picked off. Siege Tanks exposed. Zerglings eating some fire. And it looks like Rancor now going to back off. Phoebus has a sufficient enough army and enough of an economic lead. And I'm not seeing Rancor dedicate anything to try to defend this base. The single Marine might be able to get it done. This is a very, very late third. And honestly, Phoebus, as soon as he groups up, might be able to just turn around. As soon as the Science Vessel's here. And get an attack rolling. I don't know if he has a Radiate upgraded. Wasn't able to pay attention to that. Finally, Zergling is able to clean this up. But the Hatchery eating a lot of damage. The Mutalisks running into the turrets here. Able to pick them off. Phoebus, however, still has his Medic Marines nearby. Some SCVs scattering. So a little bit of economic slowdown, but I don't think it's enough. However, picking off a lot of Marines. Eight Mutalisks left. One Mutalisk looking thin. Now Rancor going ahead and backing off. SCV checking the upper left-hand corner. I'm wondering if he's debating going ahead and grabbing a quick third. Lurker's back midfield. Again, I'm wondering if those are hold position yet again. The Engineering Bay rolling. We have level one weapons, level one armor, a siege tank, and a science vessel now pressing forward. That science vessel is going to see those Lurkers. And I don't think Rancor can hold back, can stem the tide. The Mutalist's engaging midfield. Lurkers planting as they're already surrounded by Marines, and that is obliterated. That is GG from Rancor, just knowing he does not have enough. Too late a third, didn't have it saturated. Thebus had too much of an army, and he couldn't stem the tide. Well played by Thebus. Thebus is going to advance to the round of four. Rancor, I hope to see him next season. One of my favorite players in this, because he always has exciting games. Thanks for listening, everybody.